The COB is brought to you by Pepperstone, trusted by traders in over 160 countries. From Barangaroo Studios, here's what you need to know about the day in business and finance. Hello, welcome to the COB. I'm Juliette Sarli. It is the end of May. Hard to believe. Did we sell in May and go away? Well, not when you look at some of these records on uh, global markets. Our market up by seven tenths of one percent today. Of course, we're awaiting this key inflation data out tonight. Um, when you look at the ASX 200 over the course of this week, it is up by about six tenths of one percent. And uh, looking at the course of the month of May, we are um, pretty much little change. So it's not like we sold. We just kind of sold, then bought, then sold again. And we're pretty much back to where we were at the beginning of May. Anyway, it's all thematics, but um, certainly today has been a good day for the overall market. Let's get to those three themes. And um, was it buy in May? Because as I mentioned, we certainly haven't seen a lot of selling. And when you look more broadly at some of the key US indexes, I mean, earlier this week, we saw the NASDAQ above 17,000 points for the first time ever. That Nvidia story, AI continuing to drive that market higher. You also had the Dow and S&P 500 hit records in May as well. So. You know, whether or not that selling occurred in April, people came back in. As I said, it's only a thematic and it's only a rhyming tune that we kind of like to see. But it's very much interesting as we are on inflation watch ahead of the core PCE data. And as there is a little bit of signs that uh, the US economy is slowing when you look at that GDP print for the first three months of the year, 1.3%, you wouldn't say exactly is bumper growth. Um, So certainly showing some signs of that economy cooling. I was just talking to Mark Todd. He does expect that there will be cuts. It's of course just being the fact that they're priced out further in 2024 and that is being priced out further for rate cuts here too. Latest meal deal. Now, this is a story I, we had a little production meeting about this one. Anyway, I lost. We're talking about Guzman and Gomez. Apparently people like uh, Mexican food. Well, I like Mexican food, I should say. But anyway, very interesting. It might be debuting on the market on June 20, from what we understand. Um, Expensive, according to the Wilson analyst, Sean Week. Um, He is uneasy, which is what you sometimes do say after you've had Mexican food, about the valuation of the fast food phenomenon. Um, It has revealed plans to list on the ASX on a $2.2 billion valuation. He says at a headline level, it looks very rich. Other global rollouts, he goes on to say, like LaVisa are trading on 12 and a half times EBITDA. This is 38 times underlying EBITDA. So on his initial view, it looks very expensive. I would say I've seen more Guzman e Gomez shops when I was living in Singapore than I've seen in Sydney, but maybe that's also a reflection of whether I'm not looking properly. Let's have a quick look at um, some of the sectors on the market today, kicking it off with healthcare. Um, CSL looking good, Cochlear up by 1.3%. The tech stocks as well, um, having a quick look at those. WiseTech Global down a third of 1%, zero down by seven tenths of 1%. And a quick look as well at energy because we did see global oil prices sink on Thursday despite US data showing the biggest drop in the nation's stockpiles in five weeks. Traders of course are waiting Sunday's OPEC plus meeting for some more guidance on supply. A quick look at the top corporate stories. Um, An interesting move from Qantas and Perth signing a major 12-year agreement. Not really any move in terms of the share price. Rio Tinto has been in focus. It's going to keep its New Zealand aluminium smelter operations until at least 2044. Promedicus looked good as well, jumping to a record high at one point of $124.50. And the takeover target Nemoy Cotton traded flat at 70 cents as the suitor Louis Dreyfus extended the deadline on its bid. Telix Pharmaceuticals, though, that was a standout. Broker Willie, Wilson's excuse me, issuing a positive note on the business. It looks like those brokers at Wilson have been very busy putting out some notes today. Who else has been put busy putting out uh, their notes? Our favourite Friday guest, welcome to the COB, Shane Oliver from AMP. Um, your thoughts on selling May and Go Away kind of didn't happen, did it, Shane? Well, it depends, I guess. We did see a rally into May uh, because don't forget, if you go back to um, the, the year as a whole, we saw strong gains into the end of March, and that was when the peak was reached, I think 7,897 or thereabouts on the ASX 200. And then, of course, uh, we saw that weakness through April, 
we saw a nice rebound through into May. Uh, some global markets went to record highs, uh, but lately we've seen the market clawing back again. Um, so you could argue, well, maybe it is a case of sell in May. And May was that opportunity to get out, having missed the uh, the time to sell back in March. But I think it's still far from clear. I, I, my inclination is to think that we've just come into a rougher, more volatile patch after those very strong gains. Markets trying to digest what will happen to interest rates, uh, and obviously uncertainty about the growth outlook as well. So. All of these things are just weighing and just giving us that extra volatility. Historically, I know this, the, the saying has been sell in May, go away, come back on St Ledger's Day. Uh, in recent uh, times, it's become a bit messier and you could argue it should really be sell in July because both the US and the Australian share market tend to have strength into July after weakness through June. And then it uh, you'd say sell in July and then come back at the end of September, not necessarily St. Ledger's Day, come back at the end of September. So we still have those weaker months of August, September, um, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if we do see you know, maybe a softer month through June, but a rally into July and then weakness thereafter. Obviously, a lot of uh, a lot more weigh on a lot will depend on what happens with the US election. Uh, and I suspect that markets will now start to focus on that a lot more, having ignored it so far. But we've got a reminder that it's coming up because of uh, the findings against Donald Trump announced this morning. And 27th of June sees the first uh, presidential debate, so uh, way earlier than normal. But uh, obviously that focus on the US election will start to ramp up. Well, indeed. And of course, we had um, the big news overnight with um, former President Trump, of course, found guilty in that hush money trial. Um, when we look at the overall picture here in the Australian economy, inflation surprisingly high in April, very sticky. I read one note saying inflation's very much um, kicking its heels in. How is this complicating things for, um, or digging its heels in, complicating things for Michelle Bullock and co ahead of the meeting, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, I think? Look, I think there's no doubt they are complicating things. That, but my inclination is to regard that number. Unfortunately, I didn't get it right. I thought inflation would have fallen in April. Uh, but my inclination is to regard it as consistent with the RBA's 3.8% forecast for this quarter as a whole. Uh, 36 uh, so far. We'll probably get a dip in May. Uh, May tends to be a weaker month for inflation. There's a bit of seasonality in the April numbers. Uh, and then I suspect... Um, it, you know, the RBA could argue, well, there's no great surprises there. It wasn't good, um, but it is consistent with their analysis talking about 3.8% uh, in this quarter as a whole. But my, my feeling is we probably will start to see some lower numbers uh, going forward. That monthly inflation indicator is very volatile. You go through a few months uh, through a few months where it surprises on the upside, then another few where it surprises on the downside. To be honest with you, I think it's just added to the confusion so far. Eventually, the ABS might get it right. Um, but, of course, the, the gold standard remains the quarterly uh, numbers at present. The other thing to note is that this week you know, wasn't that great in terms of economic data. I know the CapEx numbers were solid for equipment investment, uh, but outside of that, it looked pretty, uh, pretty ordinary. Retail sales, very poor start to the Current quarter looks like we're going to see another quarter with a, a fall in real terms and certainly a fall in per capita terms. Uh, and then, of course, the construction data, housing, engineering, non-dwelling construction, all looking very, very weak for a whole bunch of reasons. But that, that those two things combined, along with the, uh, the the trade numbers, which look like to be likely being a detraction this quarter, suggests that GDP growth in the March quarter numbers we get in, on Wednesday and week ahead um, will be pretty weak and it's quite conceivable they could have stalled out or may even be slightly negative. Uh, it's not our forecast, but uh, either way, I think we will have a fourth quarter of a per capita recession and that's not the sort of environment where you sort of continue to raise interest rates. I think it's more an environment where you stay on hold, uh, exercising patience until the inflation numbers come down. Uh, but I think ultimately the RBA will be able to cut, but it's it's uh, quite clearly not going to be till later this year, which remains our forecast, or early next year. Um, yeah, it certainly changed the the whole tune of things. Just just quickly, um, Shane, in terms of the the dollar move, is it likely that we're going to see that ratchet higher as well? Do we get back to seventy? 
Well, that's been our forecast, and obviously it does depend on commodity prices remaining elevated and some increase in risk uh, uh, appetite globally. Uh, so far, all we've done is managed to grind back a little bit. My inclination is to think we will go higher, but it's uh, it's messy and it is caught up with this uncertainty about the global growth outlook. All right, Shane, always a pleasure. Have a great weekend. Uh, Shane Oliver, Thank we'll you. catch you again next Friday. From AMP, well, the stock of the day on the call today was Telix Pharmaceuticals. Adam Dawes from Shuren Partners and Henry Jennings from Marcus today shared their take uh, with, was it Nadine? I think it was Nadine. Obviously, the news that uh, the company said is, is positive for clinical results and that will build on a lot of prior data that uh, they have for the Prostax Select trial, which demonstrates that favourable safety and profile uh, and bio distribution going forward. So I think this is a real positive for the stock. The market is really liking this, even though it has continued to run. Uh, I think this one you could certainly put in the, back, uh, in the bottom drawer and continue. So I'm going to say it's a buy. We've got a lacklustre market at the moment where there's not really a lot of direction. The market's going to grasp any kind of good story. This is a good story. Mm. Um, it's not a biotech, which is a binary outcome. If the drug wins or loses or fails or succeeds, this has got a drug. This has got revenue. This is improving the pipeline as well. I like, I like this one. I think 20 bucks is very doable. It's only a couple of bucks away. It's All right. Well, the market hasn't quite closed for the week, but let's have a look at where we are tracking at the moment. I'm just time stamping this for those listening later on our podcast that we do have an earlier um, COB today because of our last call special. It is currently about 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, Telix Pharmaceuticals, though, still the leader, up 14 percent. Bega, West African Resources, Bellevue Gold and DeGray Mining all looking good. On the downside today, where we saw weakness was Strike Energy. Uh, Megaport also had a bad day, down by about 4%, along with IDP Education, Tabcorp and Collins Fools Foods. Excuse me. Um, having a look in the small end of town as well, uh, we had Catapult. I mean, I spoke to the CEA, CEO yesterday. They had um, a very big win in their share price yesterday. They're continuing to do well. He reckons that most of the developed world will be wearing some kind of sports technology wearables um, in the next five to 10 years, if they're not already. And Demerics, we also spoke to their CEO. They're up 11% today. Um, having a look at the losers, Brockman Mining, Aspire Mining, Legacy Iron Ore, Eris Resources and Atlantic Lithium all to the downside. Um, a quick look as well in terms of what's happening uh, tonight. Of course, it's all about that PCE core deflator. That's the Fed's preferred inflation measure. U.S. personal income and spending data and Chicago PMIs as well. Uh, having a look in terms of what we are looking for for the week ahead. Um, the big one, I guess, is really the GDP print that's coming through. Uh, not on the screen there, but some of the other things that are happening. Annual wage review, CoreLogic home prices, Melbourne Institute inflation gauge and the RBA Deputy Governor Hauser speaks. But as I was just talking about with Shane, it's really going to be about that overall um, GDP figure. There's some of the things that are happening in the global um, space as well. China Taishin Manufacturing Index and new US non-farm payrolls at the end of next week, along with policy decisions from the ECB. Of course, everyone's saying they may actually cut and the Bank of Canada as well coming through with its monetary policy decision. Quick look at where the market is tracking with 30 minutes of trade to go. We're up six tenths of 1% on the CBO 200. So finishing May on a high. That does it for the COB. I'm going to hand it over now to Andrew and Nadine for the last call. The COB is Gil. Oh, hey, Ken. Here we go. You're still trading? Hyperstone. Right. Trusted in over 160 countries, you? Well, I'm still with I don't think anyone trusts them. No, I'm fine with it. Just like I'm fine with my trusty coach, 1980s John McEnroe. Horrible! 1980s, huh? So, really temperamental. Keeps me on my toes. Awful! It's a bit intense. Be better! I'm still fine with it. Use your racket! He's just staring at us. Yeah, sometimes he yells and then sometimes he just stares. Is he aiming for your face, Gil? He's fine with it! 
Yeah, he's definitely trying to hit you. Uh, fine with uh, it. Don't be fine with it. Switch to Pepperstone. Trusted by traders in over 160 countries. Come on, you cannot be serious! Don't do that. Ow.